looking at a passage today from the 10th chapter of Mark's Gospel. It's a passage that has caused discomfort among Christians since the earliest days of the church. Uh, as we see in the passage, it left Jesus' own disciples in a state of consternation. Uh, for centuries, Jews had regarded wealth as a sign of God's favor, and other cultures shared that view. If you were rich, your God was pleased with you. If you were poor, you obviously had done something your God didn't like. Uh, some Greek and Roman writers even ridiculed poor people. Uh, the wealthy, though, got front row seats in public places and were escorted through the streets of any city by their, their entourages of people who had less than they did. Uh, the man in this story is usually called the rich young ruler, but that's a combination of some things from Matthew and Luke and Mark. Mark just calls him a man. <clears throat> it's not until verse 22 uh, that Mark tells us that he was wealthy. Uh, but we shouldn't disparage this fellow. Uh, any Jew of the time believed that someone could keep the commandments, all 613 of them, according to the rabbinic count. Uh, and we're told in verse 21 that Jesus loved him. Uh, but Christians have tried to soften this passage since the first century. In verse 18, Jesus says, There is no, uh, no one good but God. Now, does that mean that Jesus did not think of himself as God? Many who want to deny the Trinitarian concept of God point to this passage and the parallel in Luke. Uh, the wording bothered Ma uh, Matthew enough <coughs> that he changed it to read, Why do you ask me about what is good? Uh, the camel through the eye of the needle has also bothered interpreters over the centuries. About 900 A.D., one commentator explained that there was a small gate beside one of the main gates in Jerusalem, uh, it would be used at night after the main gate was locked. And in order for a camel to get through it, he had to be unloaded and had to get down on his knees and go through the gate. Uh, there are just two things wrong with that explanation. One, a camel can't crawl on its knees. Um, and, and two, there was never any such a gate. Uh, Jesus is using an exaggerated figure here, hyperbole, to get his point across. Uh, the question has always remained, though, did Jesus mean this as a paradigm for all of his followers? Go sell everything you have and give it away. Uh, over the centuries, people like Francis of Assisi have taken this quite literally. Uh, but in Luke 19, when Jesus had dinner with the tax collector Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus told him, half of my goods I give to the poor. Uh, we don't know if this was a one-time thing or his regular practice, but Jesus didn't say, well, give the rest of it away. Uh, instead, Jesus said, today salvation has come to this house. The man in this passage does seem to have been too focused on his material wealth. Uh, the wealth was not bad per se, but his love of it had become the obstacle between him and discipleship. Let's read the passage now as it is printed in your bulletin. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said. Go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Then Peter spoke up, <clears throat> We have left everything to follow you. Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, No one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me in the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age, homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children and fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. 
but many who are first will be last, and the last first. This is the word of the Lord.